I am Dr. Oftermauer here to cure you of all your viruses. <laughs> and I want to talk about the virus, obviously, because it's probably on all of our minds. But I'd like to also deepen our understanding of virus because there's more virus than what we normally would think about right away. First of all, let me say, first of all, that I'm not trivializing what we're going through. I'm not trying to make fun of it or make light of it because it is serious. I'm sure we all know that. I suspect I'm, some of you or maybe those of you online, you know of somebody that has died of the virus. And if you have witnessed that, many times the death of somebody with a virus is not an easy death when they can't breathe anymore. Maybe some of you know or even I might be uh, uh, going through the long-term effects of having the virus and recovering. Some people have trouble after they recover breathing and returning to full health. Sometimes that might last a lifetime. Maybe some of you have uh, undergone financial uh, setbacks, loss of a job or so on because of what's going on in our society. And think about our national economy, how that is up and down depending upon what's going on. So this is serious. And we're called to do whatever we can to get us through this virus. But that's the first level, the physical virus. I'm always telling people to read your Bible, and I say it again, but always look for a deeper meaning. And I think that this virus at least has three different levels. The first is what I talked about, and it's really, you know, the physical, mental, um, a physical uh, virus that we are afraid of. But then the next level is this virus has caused fear in us. Fear. We're, it has made us afraid. And we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of getting the virus. We're afraid perhaps of dying, or as I said already, enduring long-time medical problems. Maybe we're afraid of the death of one of our loved ones. Maybe we're afraid of just being alone because we've all experienced that now. Isolation, distancing from others. Maybe we're afraid of past sins and the effects that those sins have had on us because this virus has raised up fear in our lives. And fear is not, a, is not a physical virus, it's a spiritual virus. And it can only be overcome by faith. That's why we, we are people, of, we believe, so that we can truly trust in God's love for us to take away our fears. Now, we can't do that just by ourselves. We need God. We need the Lord Jesus. But we also need to discipline ourselves. If you want help bringing forth this greater faith in God to get us through the fears of the virus, we have to discipline ourselves. And that means don't watch so much news. Get off of social media. All of those avenues that just perpetuate within us that which causes us to be afraid. We have to turn down that volume and turn up the volume of faith in God. Now, faith in God is not going to make life always pleasant. Faith in God is not going to take away our sufferings. That's just part of living. Look at Jesus on the cross. Tell me that isn't suffering. And yet he modeled that, was willing to do that as an example of what we all have to go through. A lot of us know Psalm 23, the Good Shepherd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I was reading about a Jewish rabbi who knows Hebrew, and he says that that's a bad translation because the real Hebrew says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I shall not lack. That's different than I shall not want. And that's what we're talking about today, that with God, we really lack nothing. 
And he complains about the fact that we read the Bible through translations, and every translation loses something. He uses an example. Reading the Old Testament primarily in a translation is like kissing somebody through a, through a veil. The action is there, but not the intimacy. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. That's what faith can do for us. But it's not automatic. We have to really trust that God can walk, get us through this. Now that's the second level that I see. The deeper level of the virus are the things that go on in our society all the time, and we're so used to it, we don't even think about it anymore. The deeper levels of the virus, racism, hatred, violence, jealousy, anger, the idea that I always have to be first. And I talked already about the isolation, the distancing, depression, mental illness. All of that is going on for a long time. But we're so used to it, I bet most of us don't even think about that. Now, this physical virus can cause physical death. But some of these other viruses I mentioned, which separate us from God, can cause us eternal death. So they're much more serious, even though our emphasis is more on the physical. Now, how do we do that? How do we make God a, a priority of our life? How do we really accept that God loves us? We talk about that all the time. That's Christmas. Emmanuel, God, God is with us. Can you really believe God is with you? A lot of times we have difficulty because we're not perfect. We say, how can God love us because I'm not perfect? Those are your parents. Don't you love your children? Are they perfect? No. We're God's children. So God loves us even when we're not perfect. But the greatest example that we can, we can experience for God's love, so that it's not just something in our heads, is to experience the love of the people around us. I hope every one of you here has somebody that loves you so much that you can really experience it. Even though you might not feel lovable, that person shows you they love you. That's the first step. Now, our challenge as disciples of Jesus, our challenge to make Christmas happen, is that we would share our love for others so that they will know they are loved, and through that, that they will accept God's love. That's what Emmanuel is, God with us. Not in some head trip, but in our hearts, to really know that God is with us. That's what the birth of Christ is all about. Not a long time ago, but in our lives today. The love of God being reborn in us through the love of others. Them for us, and we for them. One man last night after Mass said, I got the point. Did you? If you did, if you really accept the vaccine of Christ, faith, then if you brought your Band-Aid along, put it on, because this is not just a physical Band-Aid, this is the Band-Aid of faith. Faith in the Lord being with us to take away all our fear. Thank you for watching the Christmas homily here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and a blessed holiday season. Please, you're invited to join us for weekend liturgy anytime you might be in the area. Or you can visit us always at mystelizabeth.com or watch us on Facebook. Thank you again and blessed Christmas.